responsible for the Open Platform 3.0 Forum, addressing the convergence of, of some of the, the new technological areas, social, mobile, big data, Internet of Things. <clears throat> and as I say, Chris has been here for, for a long time in the Open Group. He used to do run groups on networking, uh, directory interoperability, identity management, SOA, cloud computing. Some of those things have found their way into the Open Platform Forum. Um, Chris is a frequent speaker both at our events and other industry events and a contributor to several online journals. In fact, we had a little online fan club going for Dr. Harding a few years ago, I seem to remember. Uh, he began his career in research, um, communications and software research and development. Um, spent nine years as a consultant specializing in voice and data communications before joining us at the Open Group. And in this session, Chris will look at the challenges faced by companies doing digital business today. So over to you, Chris. Well, thank you very much, Steve. And good morning, everybody. Um, I, ha I have, a, have a microphone here. And I now am armed with the, the mouse pointer. Uh, so it's great to to be here in San Francisco and at the Open Group Conference and to see you all. Uh, it's something of a change for me. Um, I live in a, a small, I think you would maybe call it a hamlet in the country in England. It's got a population of three and you can't get a lot smaller than that. Um, but I think uh, I see people from a lot of different countries, which is very normal for an Open Group Conference and I suspect a lot of different backgrounds and ways of living also. So it's great that we can all get together here. Um, but actually for those of us who grew up in the 1950s and 60s, uh, probably a select but shrinking number, but probably some of us, um, international travel really is something that we were brought up to be accustomed to so we we had all these stories of space travel and uh, science fiction and interstellar journeys and you know crossing the galaxy to meet uh, creatures with four heads so crossing the Atlantic to meet people who say tomato instead of tomato uh, or maybe have a skin of a slightly different color is really just a snip um, so we were prepared for that but what no one told us about and we are totally unprepared for was the rise of the internet and the World Wide Web uh, and these have arguably made as big or maybe even as bigger difference to our lives uh, as international travel has done um, not just the web but the whole set of digital technology uh, and to the way we live, to the way we work and to the way that we do business. So, And that's really what uh, I'm going to talk about uh, in this session. How digital technology is transforming business and more particularly um, what are the kind of implications for that for enterprise architects um, what is this doing to, to enterprise architecture how can we uh, architect systems some of the considerations for how we can architect systems to deliver better customer experience in the digital age uh, and finally to say uh, a few words about the DBCX uh, work group uh, which is a joint work group of the Open Platform 3.0 Forum and the Architecture Forum and which is uh, working to establish um, the guidelines in this area. So, um, I live in a, a, a small a uh, small hamlet and uh, one of these things that this gives me a problem with is internet connectivity so uh, connecting via the telephone line is is really pretty hopeless but uh, I do have I've, I've stuck an aerial up on the top of my house uh, and with a long cable from that I can get a reasonable signal um, but it's not sort of uh, use as much as you can in the way that a phone line is so I have some questions about it I asked this question um, to try and clarify uh, my usage uh, it took me actually a little while 
to uh, find out how to ask questions. The supplier's site was mostly concerned with selling me new things, but in the end, tucked away in a corner, I did find the ability to, to ask this question. So I, I sent it off and uh, got an instant response saying, we are considering it and we'll get back to you. And sure enough, in, uh, sure enough, in a day or so, I did get a uh, response. Um, but it didn't actually... <laughs> didn't actually sort of give me a complete answer to the question I'd asked. So, okay, so I tried to clarify further. Um, I, I, I sent off another question and uh, in Duke I got the instant, yes, we're considering it, and then in a day or so I got uh, a response to that. Um, and this <laughs> didn't really answer the question I'd asked either, as far as I could tell. So, um, and I was beginning to wonder actually, because of the way it was all phrased, um, what, who I was talking to. So, I started my reply to that with the, the following question. Um, and, 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 and the answer I got back was as follows. Um, so, I'm still actually not sure whether I was talking to uh, or uh, exchanging information with uh, uh, real people or with an artificial intelligence program. Um, and I'm actually in two minds about this. First of all, if it was an artificial intelligence program, it wasn't a very good one. Um, it didn't really give the answers to my questions um, and it sort of didn't have a look and feel that made me feel it was a, a good thing to interact with. On the other hand, um, if it was real people, I have to say that a good AI, AI program would have done a better job uh, of answering my questions and directing me to the information that I needed to know. So it's really all about how you set these things up, the mix of um, you know, maybe FAQs, maybe intelligent reasoning based on the questioning and having people who really do know their stuff somewhere in the background. The architecture of how you arrange that is, is, is very important in setting up the customer experience uh, and giving a good customer experience. So, people have been doing business for thousands of years, buying and selling things. And until very recently, this is mostly being done face to face. So if you want to buy uh, fabrics, for example, you probably have questions, um, you know, is, the, is, is this cloth really made from the high quality thread that the guy tells me it's made from? Um, I've told him that I'm probably going to want to buy some more of the same stuff next week. Is he really going to be back in this place and be able to sell it to me? Or is this just a sort of quick job lot that he's got that he's getting rid of quickly and I'll never see him again? Is, is he the kind of guy that I can trust to help me if something goes wrong with what I bought from him? And if you're buying something in the street like that, you can look the guy in the face and you can form your conclusions and the conclusions you form about how far you can trust someone are a very important um, decision thing for you as to whether you're going to hand over the money to him. Uh, if you buy something on the web, um, it's rather different. Uh, you can't look anyone in the eye. Um, you are in fact interacting with uh, the systems of engagement of the corporation that you are dealing with. Uh, and it may be quite a complex interaction. You may have got to that web page because those systems have been looking at your purchasing habits. Maybe they know more about you. Maybe they've been analyzing your social media interactions. Um, maybe they've worked out that you're going to be wanting to buy some, some cloth of some kind and they pop up a, hey, you know, go to this website, have a look. This could be of interest to you. Um, but 
you still have a lot of the same kind of questions. Is this a supplier I can trust? Will the quality be good? Um, will things be okay if something goes wrong? And you can't look anybody in the eye, but there maybe are other ways. Um, you can look to see if there are customer reviews, for example, that might help you. You can, if this is a website that you've used in the past, um, you'll have a history there. If it isn't one that you've used in the past, you may still, from the way it behaves, get a, a sort of kind of feel of, 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 of is this a good, um, good company to, to do business with, to, to buy cloth from. Um, the dictionary defines the word persona as the way you behave, talk, etc. with other people that causes them to see you as a particular kind of person. The image or personality that a person presents to other people. And corporations actually have personas too. So a bank, for example, um, has buildings made of solid stone. You open that uh, solid wooden door and go inside and you will find fittings of good quality, people smartly dressed, everything that gives you the feeling, yes, this is a solid and reliable institution, these are people that can be trusted with my money and to give me good financial advice. Uh, and maybe you could say that a corporate persona is the corporation interacts with other people and with its customers that causes them to see it as a particular kind of corporation. And that helps us really to define the challenge for the enterprise architect. How do we architect systems of, and that should say systems of engagement, I'm sorry about that, how do we architect systems of engagement to deliver the corporate persona that we want? To project the persona that indicates that this is the kind of corporation, the solid corporation that we are, that customers would want to do business with. So that's the, the challenge for, for architects today and in some ways we are fortunate because although you could say digital technology is throwing up this problem that we are no longer able to do business face to face and uh, gain a feeling of trust and con confidence through personal interactions it's also um, putting up a lot of things that uh, can help us overcome this like the ability for example to um, analyze data, analyze social interactions on social media uh, and gain an understanding of, of the customer. So uh, it, it's really two ways. But there are a lot of exciting things happening in architecture uh, just at the moment. Um, so microservices are what you might call the latest twist in the long running saga of the SOA revolution. Um, service orientation was introduced as an architectural principle, golly, over 10 years ago now. Uh, and it's been gradually gaining ground, it's gradually evolved, um, and it's now at the point where a lot of uh, services or a lot of, of systems are service based, they present APIs and these are the ways that you interact with them. Um, microservices, which I've heard defined as SOI, SOA done right on a small scale, the idea that you will break things down into very small business oriented blocks of functionality, each of which will be a self-contained service, um, that is, 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 is gaining ground as a popular way now of, uh, uh, of architecting systems. Um, if you are around on Wednesday, 
um, you can hear not about microservices architecture but about uh, mainstream SOA and um, standard architectures for that Heather Krieger uh, is, is giving a presentation on that uh, on Wednesday and also by the way uh, on, uh, on cloud architecture standards so we're seeing we're seeing architectural practices evolve, service orientation evolving as a movement and then changing itself uh, to microservices and then maybe more things beyond that. Um, we're also hearing about interesting things with cloud architecture. Uh, this afternoon there will, I hope, be a very interesting presentation on um, the use of fabric-based um, modern architectures. I say I hope because the presenters are from the US East Coast uh, and uh, it will be a question of whether they have local colleagues I think who can deliver if we're going to get that presentation. If by any chance they can't deliver it I will try and see that we can uh, if we can get it arranged as a webinar. Um, we have um, had, in fact, internally within the open group uh, a members-only uh, web presentation on this topic. Um, so that's, that, that, that's how I know what it's about, I guess. Um, so we could organize a public webinar if the presentation can't go ahead this afternoon, but I, I hope it will be able to. So. Um, again, the idea of fabrics, um, threads, we woven together uh, based on cloud computing uh, is, is a way that architecture is, is, is evolving. Um, open business data lake. So this is the concept that you put all your data into a, into a lake or a, a, a big uh, collection of data and then you develop actionable insights not only from the data that you have stored in the lake but from incoming streams of, of, of events and, and information. Um, and this is a concept that I think is going to um, revolutionize the way we think about information perhaps to the same extent as um, service orientation has revolutionized the way we think about application processing and um, we currently have in the open platform 3.0 a fast track of the open business data lake technical standard which is being fast tracked by Capgemini uh, and uh, we will hear more about this uh, at the next conference in, in London in, in three months' time. So, uh, the Open Platform 3.0 Forum was founded on the vision um, that uh, we want to help enterprises to gain business value from new digital technologies, uh, particularly from cloud computing, uh, from mobile computing, uh, from social computing, from big data analysis, and from the Internet of Things. These are mainstream digital technologies which are changing the way that we, um, we do business and we architect systems to do business. Uh, so the forum was founded to uh, to help enterprises gain business value from those technologies and we are doing work in the individual areas of the technologies as for example the open business data lake uh, in the area of, of big data um, but we are also working to develop a interoperability standard for digital platforms so increasingly um, applications or what traditionally would have been applications are being delivered as sets of services running on digital platforms um, and the challenge for interoperability if you are developing a solution that doesn't go outside one of those platforms it's very easy but if you as is often the case want to develop 
a solution that uses um, capabilities from multiple digital platforms, then uh, you need them to interoperate and typically you will look at um, a catalog of services exposed by uh, on each of those platforms that you will want to integrate. Um, enterprises and wider business ecosystems because enterprises typically exist within wider business ecosystems will maintain cross-application service catalogs and that would enable users to compose interoperable solutions by combining those services. And the um, interoperability standard that we're in process of defining will facilitate that. So that's um, a part of the way that the architectural platform is developing to support digital business. And of course, um, the TOGAF architecture development framework remains, I think, a constant within the open group. Some of these new techniques may change the way we think about, uh, for example, uh, application systems, for example, data systems, um, for example, technology systems. Um, or maybe we will be referring the, to them as um, information fabrics, um, um, intelligence fabrics, uh, and infrastructure fabrics. Um, so there may be changes in the way we think at that level, but the overall framework that enables collaborative teamwork, um, that enables uh, a, a key characteristic that the architecture is driven by the business, um, the business needs, the business considerations, uh, this, I th this will, I think, remain as a constant um, when we develop architectures for, for new digital technologies and systems based on them. Um, and for example, um, the definition um, of, of principles, which is a key feature of TOGAF and the insistence on the conformance to those principles, um, is going to be, I think, a key thing when you're talking about architectures based on microservices or threads or whatever, uh, which are developed by different teams and have to be have to work together to give a consistent um, a consistent experience to the customer, um, a consistent uh, way of supporting the business. So um, I now want to say a little about the uh, DBCX work group. DBCX stands for, and this is something of a mouthful, uh, Digital Business Strategy and Customer Experience. Um, and it is about working out how to do architecture for digital business and in particular uh, for digital business that delivers a good customer experience. Uh, and I'm actually not going to say too much about it because um, the two speakers following um, will, they represent um, the two of the, the key members of this work group, um, PA Consulting and Huawei, and uh, they will be talking about giving their ideas, uh, which are the ideas that the, uh, the work group is discussing, and this, this is kind of, uh, I'm giving some introductory thoughts here to that. So I'm not going to say too much about it, but I will um, just uh, mention that we are a joint work group of the Open Platform 3.0 Forum and the Architecture Forum. Uh, the Open Platform 3.0 Forum because the content of what we're looking at is very much based on these digital technologies. Uh, the Architecture Forum because uh, it's about how you develop a particular sort of architecture in this context. Um, the 
uh, the work group is, uh, well, has in fact developed a white paper. Um, the draft of that is currently in its final review, uh, and we hope that that will be published um, in a few weeks' time and available from the Open Group Publications catalog. It's also working on a reference model um, uh, which will uh, help people to understand how to how to do this uh, this kind of architecture uh, and I'm sure we'll be developing other guidance um, that will uh, help to do that too so um, it's an important work group it's a it, it, there are a lot of very good ideas being um, exchanged in that work group um, resulting uh, well, you'll see the white paper, uh, but hopefully the ideas will result in good guidance when the work group uh, has completed its, uh, its more substantial deliverables. Um, and that is something that any member of the Open Platform 3.0 or the Architecture Forum uh, can participate in. If you want to find out more about uh, what that group uh, has been up to, uh, there are a couple of webinars that it's done and recordings of these are available. Uh, the Customer Experience Journey in Digital Disruptive Business Models uh, and Creating Great Customer Experiences in a Digital World. The second of those actually uh, was uh, delivered only last week. Uh, so uh, that's um, right up to the minute. And those recordings are available uh, through the Open Group Bookstore, and I'll uh, give you another way of finding them um, uh, before I finish. So uh, I encourage everyone to, uh, to have a look at those and uh, get involved in the work of the work group. So to conclude, uh, and there will be time for questions, which I'm happy to take. We've looked at how digital technology is transforming business, about how the face-to-face -face way of doing business is being replaced by the customer interacting um, with systems of engagement in a complex way. Um, and that presents challenges to the architect uh, in how does that, uh, how can the customer be given the, the, the kind of customer journey that the enterprise wants the customer to have um, and how will the customer come to trust the enterprise uh, and have a loyalty to the enterprise so that they will be a, a repeat customer and continue to do business with the enterprise. So we've looked at that. Um, we've looked at how we architect systems of engagement to deliver corporate persona. That's the, well, we've, we've set that as the key challenge. We've looked at some of the new architecture techniques that are available for the architect to use in doing that. And we've mentioned briefly the DBCX work group, which is working on architecture for digital business, and will be developing the more precise how those techniques can and should be deployed to obtain the architecture uh, that uh, will meet the need. So if you want to find out more, um, if you visit that website, um, there will be pointers on that too, amongst other things, the webinars, the webinar recordings. Um, there will be, if you are a member of uh, the Architecture Forum or the Open Platform 3.0 Forum, you can log into that page, you can find out the work in progress that uh, the group is doing. And also, if you want to get in touch with me, you should find uh, contact details there too. So, thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Chris. Ah, I've got a, one question, but my guess is 
that we have others from the audience. First, uh, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Dave Lounsbury, Chief Technical Officer of the Open Group. Chris, thank you very, very much for that great presentation on this exciting area. Let me first ask, anybody else got any question cards for Chris? If you, if in the back of the room, I know it's a bit hard to move around. My colleague Steve will pick those up for you. Well, let's get started, Chris. We've got one question, um, and, and that is that uh, Open Platform 3.0 will require uh, new legal arrangements and security for, for achieving interoperability. Uh, what are the main topics for the legal domain? Do you have any thoughts on that? Main topics for the legal domain, and that is a very pertinent question. Both the legal and the security aspects are important to uh, Open Platform 3.0. Uh, we have, in fact, in our members' meeting on Thursday, a joint meeting with the Security Forum, uh, with whom we will be discussing some of the uh, security issues. Um, and not only, well, you can sometimes class identity management as a branch of security. I personally think it's something a little bit separate. Uh, but clearly, um, digital identity and the ability to have interoperability with, between different platforms that have different concepts of digital identity is a key um, issue that needs to be taken into account in defining uh, the platform standard. Um, uh, there are other considerations obviously with ensuring that the, the digital identities can only access the information that they need to and that the information that they have is, is secure and, um, uh, and, 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 and the other security considerations which I'm sure people are very much aware of. Now unfortunately the Open Group does not have similarly a legal forum that we could similarly discuss the legal questions with. Um, but those questions actually are very important. Um, we are touching on them in some respects in that <coughs> in the work we did, uh, we, um, we developed a business scenario as part of our understanding of the need for the platform and the platform requirements. And one of the things that that identified uh, was the need to um, be concerned about the preservation of intellectual property rights. Um, so that is clearly one legal aspect. Um, if information is to be shared between, um, s between uh, components of a solution, um, then understanding the intellectual property rights is, is one legal aspect that we do have on board and that we are uh, trying to think through. Uh, but I won't say that we do have a, a we, as I say, we don't have a, a, a legal forum. So it may be that there are some other uh, legal aspects that we're not fully aware of that we should be taking on board. And if you feel that there are things that are missing in this respect, then we would like to hear from you on that. Good. Thank you, Chris. A couple more here. Uh, one I want to ask myself. Um, I heard what you're talking about the, in the, the concept of SOA where customers would assemble uh, solutions. Uh, that sounds very similar to some of the things that are going on with uh, demand-driven soft uh, IT that's uh, happening in the um, IT for IT form. Mm -hmm. Do you see synergies between those two and how are we going to exploit them? Well, I do see synergies and um, uh, to to answer the second question first, um, it's likely that we'll have a small liaison group. Um, that's one of the things that we'll be discussing in the members' meeting um, uh, at the end of this meeting. And we did, in fact, have a substantial joint meeting with the IT for IT forum um, in the Edinburgh conference three months ago. So yes, uh, there are, there are synergies. We will. Um, we, we will liaise with and work with the IT for IT people to explore those. Uh, and in some cases, there could be common threads to what we're doing. So microservices, I think, will be a topic of interest to both of us. But we are, I think, approaching um, these things from very different perspectives. Um, IT for IT is um, what it says. 
uh, Open Platform 3.0 is about the provision of a, a digital platform and the definition of a digital platform. Um, so they're not the same thing. So we will continue to approach them separately, but talk to each other. So next question. How do you see doing digital business affect or change or transform traditional business models to a digital experience business model? Now, that's not an easy question to answer. <laughs> uh, it, it is a good question. Um, I mean, I think we've all seen some of the changes in business models uh, with the, the rise of companies whose business is selling things on the web or maybe increasingly moving to being a marketplace on the web through which other companies can, can sell things. Um, we've seen um, we've seen taxi companies that don't own any taxes, to quote another famous example. So we have seen um, a lot of new ways of doing business emerging, new business models emerging as a result of the availability of digital technology. But the thing about business ideas is that they are genuinely creative things and they are not obvious. If I knew what the next big disruptive digital business idea was, I'd form a company and get rich. Um, <laughs> so I'm sure there will be, but I couldn't hazard a guess as exactly what they are, but history certainly shows that there have recently been these, these transformative things. You may have to settle for being famous and just, they're not just rich, right? Well, <laughs> even that <laughs> would, be, uh, would be good. One more question here, Chris. Oh. Uh, so doesn't the uh, digital, doesn't the customer experience also include the store? Uh, apologies for whoever asked this. I think you're talking about a physical store here. Uh, and precisely what does that, you know, determine, how do we determine what a customer will want as, as they enter the store? And that could be a virtual store or a physical okay, store. Okay, so, well, no, actually physical store is a, um, is a valid point to make because we're talking about a business architecture uh, and that includes bricks and mortars, physical stores, as well as web presence. And a lot of companies actually are finding that the combination of the two, um, you can order online, click and collect in your local physical store, is a good business model. So um, the, the idea of the, the, the physical store being part of the digital business model and being part of a new way of doing digital business is a valid idea uh, and companies are, are exploring that. How do you, when the cu customer walks into the store, was that the question, how do you understand what they're, they're how do you understand the customer? Yeah. And that is a, um, that is something that is part of the, uh, the practice that we're trying to develop, if you like, of, uh, of architecture. Clearly, there are ways of understanding customers uh, through social media, for example, if you can find a customer, what they're doing on social media, a lot of companies make that analysis. Um, you can track their progress through sites on the web using cookies, that's a well-known uh, technique. So there are established ways in which you can find out about the customer. So understand your customer is, is a good thing. I think we have a long way to go um, before we get good at that, my thoughts about the kind of understanding that uh, a lot of websites have of me, uh, uh, they, they're about as good as the AI system or, or whatever it might have been was that I talked about. Um, but yes, that is, a, um, that is a part of how to develop the customer experience that we we, we will explore. And that's actually a, a great place to wind up because it leads very nicely into our, our next speaker who I'll introduce in a second here. Thank you very much, Chris. Big round for Chris.